Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and today I wanted to do a video on my 2012 Mac Mini. I did a video on this not too long ago. Uh, this time I upgraded the RAM, so I essentially upgraded it to fully loaded. It's basically as spec'd out as you could get it, and this only cost me right around $400. Uh, it's really the first time I've ever had a, definitely a computer that was maxed out, and it's something that's affordable that anyone can do for $400. Uh, you know, you talk about PCs, obviously a PC is going to kill this thing, but for what I use it for, non-gaming or video editing related, it's perfect. Um, you, know, you could spend thousands on a PC, but to have this, which the top tier would have cost thousands, I know well over 1000 to do it only, what, uh, six, seven years later, kind of like the Mac Pro, but not near as capable as the old... Uh, old cheese grater but less cheese grater than the new cheese grater Mac Pros. So I got one, this was $350 on eBay. This is the Core i7, it's the third gen i7. You can see it's in good shape. You have to shop around on eBay, just be patient and you can find one for under $400. That's the i7, you can get an i5. But uh, the quad core, these are quad core i7s, and the i5s are only dual core. And the 2014 models, I would just discount completely because they're all low powered dual cores. So, one thing I don't understand is all these Macs have like really scratched plates, and you can tell this was taken care of. So, I'm not sure why they were made to where they seem to just scratch by just being set on that point or that spot. This came with my hard drive installation kit. It kind of helps get under here. Now mine came with an Apple SSD, which I'll show. I just put in 16 gigabytes of crucial uh, 1600 megahertz RAM. Cleaned this up a little bit when I first got it. So you can see here, this was the Apple SSD that it came with. So this is Apple's SSD. It wasn't upgraded when it came, uh, when I got it, but it was like that from factory. This is basically everything you have to do to get the hard drive out. That's the easy one, the top, but you have to take this whole board out. And that's why I ran into quite the problem where I knew exactly how to take it out. I watched several videos, but mine got cockeyed and when I went to pull it out, it wouldn't come out straight. And I couldn't straighten it out and never doing it before. I busted two of these capacitors off, as you can see here. You tell there's four in a row. So there's still two remaining. I wanted to try to solder those on. I am terrible with soldering, but the little connections were just so small, like literally like pinpoint small, and they completely broke off. And I tried to solder new ones, but it's too hard. And I couldn't find these. It was just typing in 30F32B. 16 volt or I couldn't find anything you could probably buy a Mac for parts but I feel like it'd be so hard to unsolder and then resolder I, I was absolutely amazed when it still booted up and it's been working fine for months so anyone that knows more about computers because I don't know that much I'd like to know what these capacitors do and how come my computer still works perfectly fine even with those two busted, does it uh, put all the load on those two, or is it just something that wasn't that crucial, or does it get rectified in something else in here? Just just wanted to add that in, just for anyone that would know. This was the eight gigabytes of RAM, which came with it. I'm assuming that was factory RAM. And these are the two sticks I put in it. These were only $40 for the pair, and hopefully I can sell those because I don't need them when you can only fit two modules in the Mac. So it's a, definitely a nice compact package, but uh, it does make it hard to get into. But I still think for that reason that you can get access to both drives and you can add two drives in it and your RAM upgrade and you could change the power supply if it went bad or the fan. It really makes the 2012 even to this day still probably the best Mac Mini and it's still competitive with the uh, low-end 2018 Mac Mini and again you can get to the memory on this one unlike on the uh, 2018 and you can get to the RAM on the 2018 but it's not as simple as just right there at the top. And again if you want to see anything a little more specifically like how to get one of these Mac Minis I did that in my previous video kind of 
give an idea how you can search for one on eBay. So again, now I'm up to 16 gigabytes. And I really don't have anything significant running aside it's just from what starts up at boot. Uh, I want to show this again. This is something that I don't understand why almost no one across the board, how professional, how um, amateur, nobody ever shows boot and restart. So I want to do that so starting now. So that was just a few seconds. You can hear the tone. And then this takes under 30. It's not as fast as when I first got it. It was like 15. But once I added all my programs and I added a second drive, it has slowed down a little bit. But to me, I mean, it's still so much better than anything I've had before because I've never had a solid state and anything aside from my Microsoft Surface. And that quickly, we're back up and running. Uh, you don't, I don't have that many things running. I'm more familiar with Windows, but everything's ready to go. Now that was a rare instance where, try that again, usually that's a little bit quicker. More like that. So maybe that was a little bit, maybe it wasn't completely ready, but it's really hard to max out the memory now so I can open iTunes. And that's one thing with, um, I don't know if I want to go to Mac OS Catalina just because I really like iTunes. T to me, it seems like the opposite of Apple to fragment the app into three different apps when they always were about simplicity. I could see overhauling iTunes making it look better because it does look very dated. But it was as simple as, you know, you select what you want from here. It wasn't that hard to do. Photoshop seems to run a little bit faster. I don't think it's truly supported on Mojave. As you can see, I get that little spinner thing. But uh, even with this solid state drive, it was much slower to boot whenever I first uh, had it before I had this RAM upgrade. So it does seem like it helped somewhat. I don't think Photoshop is like completely supported because when I first installed it, it said it wasn't compatible, but it still works. So maybe that's why it acts up a little bit. And then I use this to view my uh, pictures because I don't like the built-in Mac viewer. And for some reason, it uses a ton of memory, like a gig. And I don't know why. That just seems weird, but I wouldn't, I usually force close it anyway when I'm done, but I wouldn't have to worry about it now because that was kind of significant when it was only eight gigs of RAM. So you can see all the specs here. Now there is technically one model above it that's a 2.6 gigahertz i7, but I don't really think that 300 megahertz is gonna make enough of a difference to really matter. Uh, I thought that the 2.6 gigahertz was only the server edition, but I think it was just a option that you could get when you bought it, but they aren't as common. You look for just the i7 model and most of them are 2.3 gigahertz, some are 2.6, but I would go with either. If you can find either, it sh should be fine. And then again, I have, this is a 7200 RPM drive. I thought it would pair a little better with the SSD. And I, again, I just left the factory Apple one in here, so I didn't need to upgrade that, which was nice. And then the crucial RAM. And I am going to go ahead and run a Geekbench just with uh, Mac OS Mojave and the extra RAM. I'm not sure. I don't think it'll make much of a difference compared to what the identical benchmarks were when the uh, system originally came out, but just so you can see what it does maxed out in 2019. So you can see we're coming up on three minutes here, but it's just about done. And there's the results. And uh, this is the result I ran with eight gigabytes of RAM. You can see the multi-core 
and the single core actually is slightly lower, so I'm not sure if that's just a bit of variance in it or if anything it was running in the background, but it's basically the same. It's still a the decent multi-core score. The single core is a little, little back there, but it's not bad. I mean, both of them are still competitive for being a quad-core, multi-core, still fairly competitive. The single core is not out of the ballpark of what would be modern, but when you get into six core, eight core, and so on, it, there's definitely a difference at that point, but a quad core is still very capable. So we'll go ahead and run the other test. Now I can't afford to do the metal test because I'm a punk, so we'll go ahead and just do the open CL. This test is coming up on two minutes. And there is the open CL score. And compared to when I did it before, which I don't think the RAM would affect this, you can see just those two last digits were flipped, so basically an identical score. And the last test I want to run is one on the disk speed, so I'm going to start with the solid state drive. This is the Apple one, and so I had you know, nothing done with it, just straight what came from Apple. And I have run this test before, and what I've noticed is that the write, though it's certainly not bad, and it's much better than any uh, hard drive, it is kind of low. It seems like a lot of newer drives, the read and write are basically the same, even though the write traditionally was always lower. Uh, now the read's pretty much where it should be. Uh, I think 500, 550 is about the max that you can get through SATA 3. So I wish that the write was more like the 450 range, maybe 500. I'm not sure if I bought like a brand new Samsung or other brand solid state drive if that would, if it'd be worth it, because I mean the prices have come down, I would only need a 250, considering I haven't even come close to filling this 250, and I have the terabyte data drive as well, but I don't really know if it would make a difference performance wise. But this is a drive from 2012, so it, it might not be a bad idea in the near future to put a newer one in, obviously add a ton of longevity in case this one would ever have any problems. And now I'm switching to the hard drive, one terabyte data. And remember, this is a 7200 RPM drive, so that's why it is a little bit faster than what you would expect. And to me, I only put my videos, pictures, pictures um, pull from it very quickly. Video is a little bit longer, but I really don't do that much dragging and dropping aside from just when I put a file on here. I don't usually access them that often, so that this speed's just perfect for me. I have no complaints. And I would recommend, if you have the money, you want to put two solid states in it. But I think, again, a 250 or a 500 gigabyte solid state drive paired with a one or two terabyte 7200 RPM two and a half inch uh, hard drive is really just the best way to go. Use two drives in this. And uh, it pairs great and uh, really almost like a regular PC put two drives in it. You can't do that with any other Mac minis that I know of aside from this 2011 and 12 model. So I have to say I'm very pleased with this. It's again the best performing computer I've ever had. I'm definitely late to the party, but again there are people that are still getting the 5,1 Mac Pros. And I thought about doing that because the entry price is pretty cheap, but that's just to get the one processor. Ideally you want to have both of the Xeons and that's kind of a proprietary and expensive because you have to get that specific one that has the two, um, you know, uh, I'm not sure what's called sockets. And then you got you can do much better uh, graphically because you can put a graphics card in it and you can go crazy on the RAM. But for the simplicity of it, uh, that Mac Pro would take up so much space, just that easy form factor, put it anywhere. Not the easiest to work on, but you can get to both the drives and the RAM. No problems, I've never had any crashes, never had any slowdowns, overheating, anything in the two months that I've had this Mac Mini. So hopefully I can get it another two, maybe three, four years out of it. That would be great, and it does speak for the longevity of computers now. They are very capable. I'm not sure how long it'll be supported software-wise, but it definitely is great the way it is. So I'm gonna enjoy it for as long as I can, for $400, give or take, maybe you can find a better deal or you already have components around. It's really worth it if you're into Macs or you want to get into your first Mac. This is my first uh, Mac OS computer. So I'm very happy in this ecosystem and 
it's definitely worth it. So hopefully you found this interesting, helpful, and it's definitely something worth getting into for the money. So thanks for watching and see me in the next one. Have a good one.